why sustainable travel? I've been exploring the concept for a little while now, trying to get my head around the different sides of sustainable tourism, but for this video, I want to step back a little bit and talk about why sustainable travel is so important to me, and why I think it's important to raise awareness and discussion about it. And I'm here in the Lago de Atitlan in Guatemala, which is a beautiful and a stunning place, but also one which I feel sums up the point quite well, both in terms of the, the risks and the opportunities of tourism. If this is something that interests you in regards to sustainable travel and tourism, please do subscribe to the channel and by all means share with anybody else who you think might be interested. But more importantly, let me know your thoughts. I'm really keen for this to be a discussion because I'm learning as I go, so I'd love to get your thoughts on it as well. But why sustainable travel? So for that, I think you first need to answer why travel. Traveling is an amazing opportunity. It's a privilege to be able to see the world and all it has to offer. It opens up perspectives, it gets you out of your comfort zones, and it allows you to try new things and understand different ways of being and doing. I've been lucky in my life to be able to travel quite a lot. It's not like I've seen every country and every continent, but when I was growing up, I was lucky that my parents often took us away on holiday, sometimes to close by Europe or sometimes further away. And as soon as I started earning money, I've worked hard to be able to travel the world. In my 20s is when I've had some of my most amazing travel experiences. Travel has become such a big part of who I am. Every single one of those experiences has shaped me, the way I think, the way I see the world and my lifestyle. And that's why I'm a huge advocate for travel because I think it's changed me for the better, I hope. And I really do encourage anybody to to get out there and to, to see the world. And I realize that travel is, is a privilege. It's not available to everybody to fly across the world. But then again, travel doesn't necessarily mean flying across the world. It's, traveling can be just as much in your backyard as it is all the way on the other side. To me, traveling is much more measured by state of mind rather than geographical distance. And so, that's why sustainable travel is so important to me because from a purely personal and emotional point of view, if travel has brought me so much as a person, then I'd hate to think that that's at the expense of people, of places or of my planet. And obviously there is an objective side to this as well, what with tourism becoming so much more affordable and accessible to everybody. But for that side of things, you can have a check out of my first video that I did. From here, I'm talking things about more from the personal and subjective point of view. Take this lake, for example, Lago Atitlan, which is absolutely beautiful. It really is stunning here. It's a volcanic crater lake and it's incredibly deep. It's more than 300 meters deep. It's overlooked by volcanoes, and if the geography of this area wasn't enough for you, then the culture will be. Because here, we're in the Solola department of Guatemala, where indigenous Mayan culture lives strong. And around the lake, there are several little villages and towns, some only accessible by boat, where you can see, learn, and experience Maya culture. This is, without a doubt, one of Guatemala's top tourist destinations along with Tikal and Antigua and you can really see why but the picture isn't quite as rosy as what it always looks out to be here For one thing, the lake is polluted and quite badly polluted at that There have been an increasing amount of outbreaks of cyanobacteria which is really toxic and it's a big threat to biodiversity of the lake and also to people. So you definitely can't drink the water anymore and in a lot of places it's not advised to, to swim. Why is it polluted? Untreated waters from agriculture with fertilizers, raw sewage and other rubbish going straight into the lake. I'll link to another video which talks a little bit more about the pollution. But the contamination is severe. Is this a direct cause of tourist activities here? Not exactly. The pollution is part of a much wider problem, most notably a lack of suitable infrastructure to treat water before it gets to the lake. 
About half of the community is connected to the sewer system, but the treatment plants have maintenance and leakage issues. So a lot of that ends up in the lake without being treated. This is also a particularly poor area of Guatemala, so many of the treatment solutions that do exist can often be too expensive for people here, and so the problem worsens. And yet, the pollution doesn't really seem to be a topic of discussion amongst or for tourists here, other than when checking to see if you can swim in the lake. But that seems to be a bit of a missing link to me, because tourism is a big source of income here, so why can that not be used to help the local environment? I refuse to believe that tourism can't be used for good to help protect local places and local people like here. But that doesn't just materialise out of nowhere, it doesn't just pop out. It requires a lot of planning, a lot of managing, requires a lot of evaluation, and it means people need to work together. And when I say people, I mean tourists, I mean tourist agencies, I mean local people as well. It's quite a lot of work. Tourism here feels a little bit on the brink. In my research, I found that there is quite a bit of growth in sustainable tourism activities to support local communities. For example, there's also a few eco-hotels that I've seen and tried. And tourism is definitely being used as a solid source of income. For example, here in Panajachel, where locals sell all kinds of crafts, clothing and goods. There's also a huge range of different places here, which cater for so many different tourist interests. San Marcos, for all things spiritual. San Juan for all things arty. I haven't even gone to all the villages around and there are so many more, each with a slightly different feel. But I think also on the flip side of that, there are quite a few risks or threats to sustainable tourism here. For one thing, I've seen there's quite a big contrast between the local areas and the tourist areas in most of the towns here, which I guess is mostly the case in many tourist areas. As a Londoner, I wouldn't like to live too close to Tower Bridge, but it feels quite intense here to the point that, for example, the markets feel a little bit forced or fake. And then there's the fact that, as I mentioned, the pollution doesn't seem to be a very big topic of discussion, at least among the tourists. And yet, this place is so special. It really is beautiful and there's a reason why so many people come here to, to come see this lake. But will it stay this way if the pollution gets worse and worse and worse? That's why I feel that the pollution should be a much bigger topic of discussion because it's such an important place for locals and tourists alike. Sustainable tourism is about making sure that visitors can enjoy this beautiful place and can learn about Maya culture, but can do it in a way that actually helps this place as well, and can do it in a way that future generations can enjoy this place, and can do it in a way that local people can benefit from a steady and stable income, and in a way where local people can benefit from having visitors here without making a caricature of their culture. Which is easy, right? Exactly. That's why sustainable tourism is so important. And that's why I think it's really important to raise awareness about it and to make people think about the impacts that they have, not only from their own particular impacts as a tourist, but more generally how tourism can impact a place in the good and in the bad way. Mm -hmm.